Hello again there everybody. I've been paying attention to a story this week surrounding Roger Scruton, a conservative uh, philosopher here in Britain. He was given some minor role in the government and it turns out that he's, he's not politically correct enough. He thinks Islamophobia and homophobia are just made up terms. He he also made point about George Soros and Jewish people being involved in the, the Hungarian media or something like that. And leaders to say there's been an outrage about it. Toby Young and James Delingpole have both offered their reactions and uh, the tactic of that of the mainstream right is really what's kind of irritated me about this. The way they handle this uh, onslaught from the left, which is they try and shame the left. They, they roll their eyes and sneer at the, the, the left and the, the censorious nature of the left. The snowflakes are at it again. The thought police are out for scrutiny. And it has to be said, the behaviour of the left really makes it puke. What they're doing now is becoming known as offence archaeology. As soon as somebody on the right, or, <laughs> or passes for the right in Britain these days, is given a job or an appointment, then the drones search through all of their, their writings and their social media activity, looking for something politically incorrect. The drones then send anything juicy back to their masters and the media, and a new witch hunt begins in earnest, quickly followed, of course, by calls for the person to be deplatformed, fired, dropped, and so on. And they never stop doing it. There's pretty much an outrage or two every week now. But really, it's just the cultural Marxists advancing their agenda on behalf of uh, their echoey masters and the banks and the lobby groups. It's a long, slow purge. The British mainstream right is under constant assault. And I have to say here that I don't normally pay attention to them because they're so vanilla and they're so boring. But I do like uh, Roger Scruton. I think he has a lot of interesting things to say. So I followed this story a bit. The counter strategy of the British right to this onslaught is to try and shame the left for being snowflakes and too easily offended. It's 1984. It's political correctness gone mad. And this does not and will never work. And I'm going to explain why. The problem comes down to the fact that they always try and defend themselves from the attack, but never look for ways to weaken their enemy. They never analyse his weaponry or his modes of attack. They just wait for the next attack to come and then look for ways to dodge it or minimise the damage. Back when I used to troll the Telegraph comments section, Dan O'Connor was fond of saying that watching the interaction between the left and the right was like watching two knights. One one being armed with a, just a shield and the other being armed with a shield and a broadsword. All the right can ever really do is try and defend itself. And I read Dylan Paul at Breitbart. I read an, an article that spiked. That was the best one. And Toby Young's article at The Spectator. And I browsed Twitter. And once again, Toby Young had the, the top tweet on this issue of the, the mainstream British right. So he said, depressing to see the, the, the social media cops trawl through everything Roger Scruton's ever written in the hope of finding things to be offended by. As Freddie de Boer said, that's what liberalism is now. The search for bodies doing bad things, like little offence archaeologists. Okay, Toby. So cultural Marxists are bastards who are out to ruin your life. Now what? You see, what Scruton understands, but these pundits don't, or at least they don't go there, is that the key to defanging the left is to reject their terminology and by default the moral weight that terminology carries. Scruton said homophobia and Islamophobia were just made up gibberish. It was just shite. It didn't mean anything. But the right-wing pundits in Britain won't admit that, at least not in public. The problem with this strategy is that it leaves the ideological basis of the left's attack, attack untouched. And by doing that they folded because when the killer of attack drones of social justice descend on one of their own, all they can do is complain about the way they carry and behave. 
carry themselves and attack and whinge and gnash their teeth. That's that's what they complain about. And yet, if they take power words such as homophobia and Islamophobia seriously, then what really can the mainstream British right complain about? If they've already accepted the premise of the left's argument that Roger Scruton actually is a thought criminal. He has transgressed the moral norms of British society. They've conceded the moral high ground to cultural Marxism because they recognise and to a degree even respect the terminology. Why should you take the language and the morals of your enemies seriously, especially when it's specifically designed to cripple you? All they are left with is to complain when the boot boys come to collect on the thought crimes of right-wingers who have rejected the moral codes of the left. In this picture, the bear represents the people of the right, the sort of mainstream, boring conservatives of Britain. The humans are the globalists. The dogs are the left. But what is actually the biggest problem facing the bear? It's the chain. It's the fact that the bear is shackled and its movement is really restricted. The chain is political correctness. It's left-wing terminology. The bear is in a situation where it can fight, but only on the terms set down by its enemies, and eventually it's going to die. All it can do in the meantime is try and defend itself. The priority of the, the mainstream British right should be to cut through that chain as fast as possible, as it stands now, all they're doing is growling at the dogs. In America, the alt-right is fond of making fun of moderate Republicans who say the Democrats are the real racists. The critique is essentially that the centre-right are trying to use the left's terminology against them. And again, this too fails because they're still fighting on ground laid down by their enemies. In Britain, the, the edgy but not too edgy types who hover around UKIP tier politics like to run around huffing and puffing that Diane Abbott and David Lammy are racists. And then they're always pissed off that nobody takes any of it seriously. But the game is rigged against them to begin with. Calling people racist in a negative sense is a Judaic Marxian tactic designed to universalise European ethnic feeling. Why the hell do Europeans think that's ever going to work in their favour. Diane Abbott is just an ethnocentric African. She just happens to be in the wrong continent. Too many Europeans seem to have fallen for the trick that left-wing morals are universal. So the, the Europeans are like fish in water trying to understand what it is to be wet. And so what the moderate right in the media need to be doing is blowing up the terminology itself. And that's what Roger Scruton did. I no longer recognise your words of power. It's just left-wing gibberish. It may mean something to you, but it means absolutely nothing to me. And I know what they'd say to this. They'd cry out, oh, I'm not sure where this is going. What comes next? Are we going to say there's no such thing as racist? What about anti-Semitism? Well... <laughs> Racism is just the demonization of European ethnocentrism. And anti-Semitism? Why, why would I be a pro-Semite? When you point out that the words are just trash, without any meaning, the moral weight they carry evaporates. You've stepped out of the bear pit, and now you can fight the filth on your own terms. And when they say, where's all this leading? Where, where, where are we going with all this? And you say, wherever the hell we want, we're going to be the masters in our own land again. I'll catch you later, folks. <laughs>